<laughs> Dark Side of the Ring released their episode on the Collision in Korea pay-per-view from 1995. This was a an event put on by WCW and a Japanese promotion. They came together to do this huge event in Pyongyang, North Korea in 1995, which was is said to be the largest and honestly is the largest crowd to ever attend a wrestling event. There's numbers ranging from 160 to 190,000 people each night. So upwards of 400,000 uh, in attendance for both nights of the pay-per-view. That's insane. Collision in Korea. They told stories about how they went to North Korea, how how they got there, and when they got there, their passports were stripped away. They uh, Scott Norton, who was a WCW talent, almost got arrested and interrogated and and and, and thrown into a, a North Korean jail. Uh, Too Cold Scorpio apparently tried to murder Hawk, and yeah. I, ironically enough, Chris Benoit talked him out of it, which. M- not touching that one, but man, um, you know Eric, you know Eric Bischoff was there. One big surprise from this was, and I marked out. I completely marked out when I saw this. Antonio Inoki. They got Antonio Inoki to do an appearance on Dark Side of the Ring. Literally, I was watching this on my monitor right in front of me. Jumped out of my chair because. As you know, Trevor, I'm a connoisseur of wrestling history, and Antonio Inoki is legit one of my favorite wrestlers yeah. ever. Um, so, a lot happened. But Trevor, give me some of your big takeaways from what you noticed and what you saw, and you know what did you learn? What did you not know before? So, you know, there was a lot about the Collision of Korea that I didn't know, and and that, that's just being honest. Um, I didn't realize they stripped them of their passports. Like I knew Korea was was ruthless but i didn't know they did that like they t- um i don't know if we can talk about it but they tapped scott norton's phone call like that was yeah. that was crazy like it was it, in the whole fight with tuko scorpio and hulk i love the um what uh uh what scott norton said about it <laughs> he was like yeah he, he was sick he had a cold where he knows the one feeling well it, 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 you can believe what you want uh to school but if he was better, he'd whoop your ass. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't think anyone's gonna look. Look, no disrespect to Tuco Scorpio. There's a reason. There's a reason he was trying to make a toothbrush into into a into a shank to try to, try to stab Hawk. It was it was because he knew he knew in in a straight fight like Hawk would Hawk would get him. Although he got Hawk, he got Hawk on on a bad day. That 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 lucky him, lucky him. Much like Joey uh-huh. Styles caught uh, JBL, it still counts. <laughs> <laughs> it does you know it what does. i can't stand it myself, but that made me happy but um yeah but no like it was just it was really interesting and also i've been i don't know i have, haven't said this uh actively on this this show but i absolutely love scott norton i've always thought scott norton was, was a very underrated wrestler i was i've always been a fan of scott norton so it was great to see him because i hadn't seen him in years um it was just and to hear and to hear Bischoff talk about it too, like he actively believed that it. I don't think he knew most of what was happening either. Like I think Antonio Noki knew more than he than they thought he did, but I don't think either one of them really knew what was really going on uh, in in, uh, in Korea with with half the the program and stuff was going on. And the whole the whole pool table thing that was insane. Yeah, I, I mean the thing you need to understand about a country like North Korea is it, it it's a it's an isolated state and and their thing is they genuinely see or even as especially back then they genuinely see Americans as the enemy because that's the propaganda yeah. that they're fed and it's no fault of the North Korean people that's no. the, that's to be sure it's no fault it's the government of North Korea that does this which is why like you know. You know, I, I think Bischoff might have mentioned this on here or pro- possibly on his podcast. I was listening to his podcast where he was talking about it. And, you know, he, he talked about how, you know, the, the North Koreans are, are – the people are not, you know, they're blameless in all of this. You know, they are yeah. – they're, they're just being – they're doing as they're told. They they don't have money. They don't have food to eat. Like Bischoff mentioned this on a – on a on his, I think his podcast where he said that he, like like people are so hungry in North Korea – like especially back then in 1995, they were in the mid. They just come off a big famine in the 90s, uh, or they might have just been going through a huge famine. 
there was not a rat in the city. Mm. That's how bad the famine was a, a, at the time. So you, you have to, like, take that into account, I think, when you're judging this kind of stuff. And, you know, the military in North Korea, they're very dictatorial. They're very precise because they don't want any American influence. They don't want any any outside influence affecting the way they govern, affecting the way they rule, because they believe any American interference, you know, hurts their ability to to put out all this propaganda. But, you know, just going back to the event, I think the collision in Korea, and it, like it's it, mind you, this was Antonio Inoki's uh, brainchild. This was yeah, his well, brainchild. Well. And I think the the idea behind it, I thought, was good. Because here's the thing. I'm someone who believes in, like, diplomacy and, and, and building trust and building faith. I do think wrestling can do that in, in some uh, instances. I, you're going to be judged no matter what, right? And this event was heavily criticized by both the media, by wrestling fans, and I think in part rightfully so, right? right. But also, I do think there is, there is a little to be, to be... There's a little there to also take into account where it's like, how else are we going to build relations? Because the governments are sure not going to do it. Maybe someone like Antonio Inoki, who is Japanese, who is who was uh, trained by Ricky Dozon, who is legend, a freaking legend. Absolutely. Guys, Google Ricky Dozon. He is a freaking legend. Uh, it, born in North Korea, went to Japan. He trained Antonio Inoki, Alibaba, all these great wrestlers. And he... And he... You know, so there was some respect there for him because of Ricky Dozon. So I do think, you know, he was a guy who could build a little bit of a bridge. It didn't end up working out in the long term. We know that now. But I, I, I don't like the criticism against this. I understand them. And part of them I do agree with. But I do believe Ninoki going out there and trying something was is better than doing absolutely nothing and just heightening tensions because you know i i think those people especially those people who were there they might have you know you know, we, we talked about how they they talked about in the documentary how nobody was into any of the matches until inoki and flair so, got in yep, there yep. yeah and, and look that is a testament to antonio inoki and rick flair they got a crowd that had never seen professional wrestling before, that wasn't even interested in professional wrestling before, had no idea what they were witnessing. <laughs> and they got them to get into it, and they got them to cheer, and they got them to pop. And I, I, I look, whatever you think about it, 190,000 people in a stadium popping for you, that's got to be an unbelievable sight if you're those guys. It's got to be. It's got to be. Like, it's, it's one of those things where, like, you're like, okay, I know nothing about this. And then all of a sudden, hey, I know that. I know that guy. And they got out there and tur tore it up. Like, they, uh, from what they were describing, it was one of those slow things. Like, they were cheering at first, but by the end of the match, they were to their feet. Yeah. So, yeah, that had, that had to be something to watch. Yeah, I, I, it was. And, you know, if you guys haven't, Eric Bischoff did a, a in an 83 weeks episode about the, the collision career where he kind of went over more of the stuff. Check that out. Thanks for watching this video from Real Take Sports Talk. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Also remember to check out our live show every single Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel. And remember, keep it real.